Hey, how's it going? What's your family? Once again here, Rosendo Rodriguez back at Republic Testing Labs. Now, on today's video, all right, we're going to look at the pros and cons on weaving versus stringer fills, right? So you don't want to miss out, so stand by. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I have this question a lot. So people come to me and they ask, hey, Rosendo, so what's the difference between a weave or stringer beads on a fill? We have our plate. We're gonna go ahead and prep it up really quick. We're gonna clean all that mill scale off all the way around. And now we're gonna use a back strip for this, okay? So remember, we're gonna be weaving and then we're gonna be doing stringer beads on a fill. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there we have it. So now we have it all tacked up, ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and start doing our, our root hot pass fill and cap. So remember, on this plate, we're gonna start doing what? What are we gonna do? Weave. We're gonna weave it, all right? So we're gonna weave it all the way across. So later on, we're gonna compare and we're gonna see which one uh, breaks. Here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and do our root. So remember, we're just weaving. Make sure you go up on your walls, pause, push. You're fusing really, really well. Now, we're not going to go too much into detail here because all we're doing is just comparing a weave with stringer beads on a fill pad. All right, camera audience. So basically, some of the concept of what today's topic has been is, is how, you know, stringer bead technique, weave technique, what, you know, what does the code say? What do the specifications say? And, and I spent a week and a half searching books and documents of, of different years. And I went back a hundred years and really couldn't find anything as far as anything that's documented as far as when you're welding whether a weave should be you know five eighths of an inch wide an inch wide well what is too much so what we found was a general good weld engineering practice is three to four times the diameter of the electrode so for instance Rosendo's running a 332 7018 so technically three or four times that and we use this and and, and this is the best way to measure stuff. I've got three 332 TIG wires, or four of them. I'm going to measure that. That gives me right under a half inch, about nine, about uh, seven sixteenths. So technically, if we were trying to meet code or standard, use this as a gauge. And we're, you know, right now he's weaving and he's just a hair over. He's probably just around a half inch to uh, nine sixteenths of an inch wide on his weave. From an acceptable standpoint, non-acceptable standpoint, visually, this is a good go-by right here. But for what we're doing here, is travel speed's good, is heat input's good, we're gonna go ahead and put one more weave pass on here. And also, for instance, if they were running a 1 8 diameter, here's your four 1 8 diameter electrodes up against the scale. Easy way to see how what your weave technique is, just put them together. So this is the most simple way to check your, you know, weave width acceptance criteria. Sometimes owners will write this into their standards that they don't want you to weave any wider than this. Sometimes it's wider. If we were out on a tank farm right now building storage tanks on the bottom ring, you know, on an inch and a quarter plate, we, we wouldn't run a stringer bead anywhere. We'd be weaving an inch and a half, two inches wide. So. At the end of the day, it's really whatever the manufacturer, operator, contractor writes into their standard or spec or on their WPS. But for today's purpose, we already have one plate complete with stringer beads all the way out. We're going to run weaves on this, one more layer, and then uh, I think you're going to what, stringer bead the cap? I'll probably stringer bead the cap. Okay. And then we're going to do some destructive testing. We're going to compare the bends 
Weave versus Stringer, and we'll see what we get. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so now we're doing our last fill. Whenever you're weaving your last fill, uh, fill back and forth, be very careful on how you weave it. You gotta really watch your travel speed. Try to keep it nice and tight. If you go too fast, you're not gonna end up, if you travel too fast in the middle, you're not gonna end up putting enough metal in the middle. Uh, so you really have to watch your puddle carefully. You gotta learn how to pause on the walls evenly. So yeah, you can run to a lot of complications if you're not careful. Just remember, whenever you're weaving back and forth, I think the best scenario, if you feel that you're weaving it too far apart, you're traveling too much, that's when you probably want to stop and start doing stringers. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, so there we have it. Now we have a nice fill. We're weaving it across. Remember what I said, keep it nice and tight. Watch your travel speed. You don't want to catch any slag inside, okay, in between. Also, make sure that you're pausing nicely on your walls. Uh, give you enough time to fuse together and uh, watch out with that travel speed once again. So let's go ahead and get uh, Scott and look at our fill, see what he thinks, okay? All right, audience. So what we have here is he's got the fill passes complete. He's just below flush, ready to cap. He's maintained the edge of the bevel. So when he gets ready to cap, he's got a good straight line. He knows where to go and to follow that to get a good uniform cap. So right now, we're at about almost three quarters of an inch as far as his weave width goes. And from a code perspective, from a quality perspective, there's nothing I can say or do to knock that. The weld looks good. His heat input was probably there. Amps and bolts were within tune. So we're gonna go ahead and put a cap on it and see how that goes. One thing you always wanna remember, make sure you let your plate cool down before you cap it. Keep track of your time. If you have enough time, let your plate cool down. One of the most important things you want to do here is try to follow that line. Follow your bevel, nice and even, nice and smooth. If you can't see where you're going, you don't want to keep going. You guess that you're going in a straight line. You might want to pop out and restart. And you really don't need to get too far outside the edge of the bevel. About a sixteenth is really all you need as long as you can get a good uniform tie-in or fusion to that sidewall. Anything more than that is a waste of material. Right here, that's going to be our guide line. Here we go, tiny little circles again. Make sure that your portal is passing over the line too. Remember, if you can't see the line, you can also grind a line lightly. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. We just finished our cap. Now, before you get your QC, go ahead and check your wells, make sure that you find everything okay up to your standards. But remember, deep down, if your gut feeling tells you that it's not good and you don't like it, most likely he's not gonna like it. So make sure that you fix all your mistakes before you get your QC. All right, so we got a 3B cap. Looks good, no porosity. Let's see what uh, our QC thinks. All right, Resendo, so we're going to get over here and do a quick VT. <clears throat> Everything looks good per code. There's no visible indications, no open porosity, no undercut, no underfill. The tie-ins look smooth in their transition. They're slightly staggered. Um, what we're going to do is pull this thing out of the booth and set it next to the other plate that's already been beaded out, completely out. And we're going to go over the reinforcement on the cap, kind of go over a couple things and then we're gonna to go to the machine shop and start slicing and dicing.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the one thing that we're trying to do here is determine the reinforcement of the cap. With that, I've got my fancy gal gauge here. I'm going to go down the length of the plate and check it. I'm just above a 32nd, roughly. Comparing it to the one that Resendo just did, we're roughly just slightly over, maybe two thirty seconds, just under an eighth of an inch. So from a code perspective, there's really no difference between the two welds. Um, we're going to go ahead and get these things in the machine shop, get them cut up, get them prepped, and get them ready, and we're going to do the bends and compare the results. What we have here are the bends from the uh, stringer bead weld, and they're completely acceptable. There's no difference in, in the two. Come here, Resendo. I'm going to have you hold these. I'm going to start on the other one. <laughs> Working on it. Getting ready to do yours. You ready? No difference in acceptable well. Dollar bills. Dollar bills, man. Yeah. Not bad. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. So now on this hand, I have my stringer beads on that fill. This hand right here, this is the well I was doing today. We weaved it all the way out, right? So both of them pass uh, here at uh, Republic Testing Labs. I want a big shout out to uh, Scott. Scott was the one who. Uh, did the uh, testings here. So as you see it, both of them did pass. So in conclusion, always check with your QC, always uh, make sure you ask them just to be sure, right? So ask them if you can weave it or string it, whatever he wants you to do. All right, so there you have it. Either way it works, boom. See you guys next time. Ooh,